Hello, hello everyone. This is Jen with Jen's Den Art and I teach people how to paint with acrylics and we are in our, we're coming down to the end y'all. We're in our, we only have three days left. Today, tomorrow, and Thursday in our Acrylic 101 30 Day Challenge. And please say hello when you get here. Let's get this party started. Let me find me first. Let's see where we are. Make sure we're live in Acrylic 101. Okay, there we are. Say hello, say hello. Let me share this in the group to make sure y'all get it. More options. Tell us how you're doing today. I would love to know. Okay, so today is day 28. Today is day 28. Let me get that shared in that group just to make sure because for some reason I've been having trouble getting it to um, stream in the 101 group. So let's get, let's make sure everybody's here. Hello, Miss Pat. How are you today? Hi, Kathy and Barbara. Yay, I'm so excited. Yeah, only, only what, two more days and then sign up starts. Woohoo. Hi, Michael. Hi, Monica. Hi, Kim. Good. Come on in and come relax. That's what we're all about. Oh my goodness, three earthquakes, that's crazy. Hello from Michigan. Hi from Mississippi, I just turned the heater on this morning, y'all. Hi from Iowa, Miss Jean. Yay, I'm so glad y'all are here. Kim, I hope you have a better day. Stick around, we'll help you out, okay? Hello, Miss Donna from Missouri. We're so glad you're here. Hey, Miss Liz, give our um, give our tribe sister shout out. So, if you're a tribe sister, tell us you're a tribe sister because we want to know. And I am going to switch the screen real quick, and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you what our wonderful acrylic 101 ladies have been doing i think we have a couple of, of guys in there too so miss doris has been practicing her christmas tree miss elaine look how good miss elaine has been practicing her pumpkins and her corn stalks miss elaine did two christmas trees she said the first one was done with a palette knife and then the second one was done with a brush. So it is very good. I like both of them. They are very good. Look at y'all. Look at this, how cute. Miss Monica painted our cabin to make it look like a log cabin. You see how the it actually looks like it's logs here. So we're gonna talk today about depth and how to create that depth in your paintings. All right, so here's Miss Doris. Her painting um, is beautiful. Look at that. Look at her trees. How good. I love it. So we're going to get a little more technical today. Miss Anne. Oh my goodness. Look at that. How good. I love it. I just love it. Look at the ornaments. Oh yeah. we Did y'all see we finished this one? Yeah. Y'all saw that yesterday. We did this one yesterday. These are, these are the cutest ornaments I've ever made. And I'm addicted to them. So I'm going to make more of them. Aren't they cute? They're just little, um, little three and a half by four and a half pieces of wood that I've had laying around, and I just I went and had fun with them. Look how cute! Oh, very nice. Miss Monica is doing a great job painting. We have another church from Sandra Leanne Fisher Wright. She is a tribe sister. Miss Jill is doing a great job. Y'all are look how cute. Y'all are just rocking. I'm telling you. Look at Miss Kathy's. Y'all, 
I, Kelly, you are doing a beautiful job. I love it. I have only been painting for six years, okay? I, I am not an expert. I do not have a degree in art. These are so good. Look at these. Look at Miss Pat. She made a little trick-or-treat. Um, I'm just trying to go through to get as many as I can. Miss Robin, you did an awesome job on your tree. I love it. We already saw Miss Pat's, Miss Patty's. Look at Dawn's. I love how all of you, Miss Beth, that is beautiful. So I just want to share something with all of you that I want to make sure you know. I love how positive all of you have been and how supportive everyone has been in the Facebook group. And I really, really appreciate that because we are not here. I'm trying to turn my iPad off so it doesn't die on me. Again, I just charged it overnight. Um, we are here to be uplifting and be supportive and, and make friends and share love and joy. And that is, that is what we're doing in this group. And it, it has been such a great experience and I hope you have all been enjoying it. And I'm getting kind of sad because we're going to be coming down to the wire. I know the churches are so pretty. Hello, Miss Doris, tribe sister, mini tribe sister. Miss Liz is a tribe sister. Y'all are so sweet. Miss Diana is a new tribe sister from Kentucky. So thank y'all for um, sprinkling the love and bringing us on here today and being a part of what we're doing. So I'm really excited about today. Today we're going to go back again to um, a little bit of the basics and I'm going to show you this this one particular painting that I'm going to bring to your attention. This is one of the paintings that we did in the tribe. It is um, a field of lavenders and I want you to notice we're going to start talking about depth today in a landscape. So this is what I want you to notice. Well first of all I'm going to turn my large camera around and I want you to focus on something that I'm going to show you. Okay, it's going to get a little, a little shaky, but I want you to, I want you to look at this. I'm showing you our view from outside. Okay, and I want you to focus on all the way back there, back as far as you can see. And I want you to notice the colors that you see. Those mountains way back there in the valley. Notice the color of those mountains and notice how the different levels of those mountains, the different mountain ranges, as they come in closer and closer and closer to us, notice how the color changes. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. Give me a second. Let me put me back in a normal, normal spot. All right. Okay, so... I want you to focus on that when we talk about depth today. So here is a painting that has a little bit of mountains in the background that I have done um, in the past with the tribe. And notice that my sky is, is kind of like, um, you know, a really light blue. And then as I'm getting closer and closer to the front, here. Don't even worry about the house. We're not worried about the house. We're looking at all of these different levels. We're working with a sky that's really light. And then as I come closer in and closer in, notice how the color gets a lot more bright. Okay. So the sharpness of, of the, um, the items get, there's more sharpness. Okay. There's more detail the closer we get. Look how blurry all of my trees are back here. Okay, look at the colors. Look at this green compared to this green over here. Okay, so notice how the further away you are, the, the less uh, vibrant your colors are. Okay, and the reason why that happens... Now, when, when people... This is very interesting, I find... When we take photographs, okay, when we take photographs, the camera 
can um, can change the actual visual eye, uh, the, the visualness of the photo. Okay, so sometimes our photographs are a little skewed on colors because we have we have all of those um, opportunities to create all of those different um, colors and. But if you look with your, with the naked eye and you look at a landscape or like a mountain scene, which is what we're going to focus on today, everything that's really, really far away is almost like a navy blue, okay? It's, it's a really bluish, grayish color. And the reason why is basically because of the atmosphere. It's because there's air. There, there's, the atmosphere causes a different color to show the further away it is. So when we're trying to create a depth in a painting, I want you to start looking at paintings that, um, that you like and notice how the further away the object is, whether it's a mountain or, or a tree or whatever it is, two main things is the, um, the sharpness of the object is a lot less the further away it is and the closer it gets to you, the more sharp the object is going to be, but not only that, the colors are going to be more vibrant the closer that the items are to you. Okay, so um, let me look, let me show you on the color wheel too, and we're gonna we're gonna get ready and get started. But here's something that's really interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this right to you right here. Okay, so here's my color wheel. And you know that we've already talked about, I'm looking for something to cover this up, just to give you a little bit more of an idea. So we've already talked about like all of our cool colors or all of our blues and our purples and all of that. Okay, so the further away you are, the cooler the colors are going to be. Okay. The closer you are, the warmer your colors are going to be. So the closer you get, the more kind of like maybe you might want to add like a red or something like that. So let me let me just take a color. Let me just go with um, let me go with blue. Okay, I'm just going to go with this blue right here. If I am working on way way far back, and I know that I'm going to be focusing on blue in my in my um, painting, then I'm going to want to move towards the, um, the cool colors. I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to want to move more towards the cool colors for my, my objects that are way far away from me. And then as I get closer into closer objects, then I'm going to want to maybe add some red. I'm going to want to add those warm colors in my painting. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to do, um, I'm actually just going to kind of make this up. I'm going to do two mountain ranges with different layers of mountains. Okay, I'm going to try to draw them about the same But I'm going to show you the difference between one. We're going to paint one that's the right way to do it and then one that's the wrong way to do it. All right. So let's start with the one that's the wrong way to do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my sky with some blue. And this is actually going to be a really pretty painting when we're done. So even though it's a demonstration painting, don't be surprised if it's something that you're like, oh, wow, this is really pretty. All right. So I'm going to take a paintbrush. And I'm going to start with the sky, and I'm going to go like, I'm using blue and white. That's all I'm using is blue. Just any color blue. Let me show you my palette here. Any color blue, any color white. I'm just starting there. And I'm going to go back here, all the way in the back. And I'm going to make a little bit of a sky. Okay. Hello, Miss Terry. Miss Angela, yes. So what's going to happen is um, the plan is this. The plan is the classes will be available um, until October 31st in the Acrylic 101 group. The group will be, um, will be, will, will end the group on October 31st. 
if you are a tribe sister, it's going to become a course. It's not going to be dropped into the tribe library, but it's going to be um, it's going to be created into a course. And by a course, I mean you're still if you're a tribe sister, as long as you're a tribe sister, you're going to have access to it in that course. Um, if you are not a tribe sister and you want access to it, you're going to have the opportunity to purchase it um, at a later date once I get it all all up and running. Okay, so for those of you who are not tribe sisters, you have until October 31st to have all of this information. And then on October 31st, you're going to have the option to continue to have access to it for life um, at a small fee, or you just won't have access to it anymore. But if you're a tribe sister, as long as you are a paid subscriber to the tribe, you get 24-7 access as long as you are a... Um... See, so that's what I do for my tribe sisters. Every single thing that we do, lives, anything, the tribe sisters get access to it as long as they're a paid subscriber. Whenever they are not a paid subscriber anymore, then that's when they lose access to everything. So that is the way it works. Okay, so I am now going to... Start on my mountains. That's just a sky, okay? I was just working on a sky right here. And so, I'm going to make it a little bit more on the white side. Just a little bit of clouds. So, I'm not doing anything different for the sky. Both of them are the same. But this is what I'm going to start doing for the mountains. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take, let me take some black some blue and some red and a little bit of brown as well okay so black black let me clean my palette knife off i have the blue i have the red and then let me find my brown just a little bit of brown so i'm just using black blue red and brown so the right side here is what not to do the left side is what you should do. So let's look at what's going to happen on what not to do. That's going to be the easy one. I'm going to start making my mountains. And I want you to pay attention to the color of my mountains. Okay, I don't really know where I put that, that line at. Okay, I'm using kind of like a blue and a brown and a gray. I'm using a big filbert brush just to show y'all all of this. Okay, so what do you see that is um, kind of odd about this? That's not the best decision. Anybody have an idea? Why do, why do you think I am saying this is not the best way to do it? Now, at the same time that I'm showing you what not to do, I'm going to show you what to do so you can compare and you can see what I am talking about. All right, I'm going to let y'all watch me for just a minute while I get all of this down.
I'm not saying anything right now if y'all were wondering. Okay, so that's basically going to be my first mountain range, like really, really far back. Okay, y'all see the difference? Yeah, okay, so this is way, way too dark. Okay, you can see the difference in the levels here. And as we do the different layers of mountains, you'll be able to see how this depth is going to play and how it's gonna become, it's gonna look so much better here than it does here. I'm gonna keep on going with the wrong way to do it, just so you can see where we're going with this. But I'm gonna let you look at the two final layers, and then you decide for, you know, once you look at it, what do you notice? And like, you know, just pay attention to, um, how different it will all end up being. Okay, so this is kind of a purple color. I kind of added, um, I just wanted it to be a little bit darker. So I added a little bit of purple in there. And the reason why I did that is because the closer you get to the front, the more um, warm you want your colors to be. So what I did was I added some red because red is a warm color. And so when I added the red, you can see what that red did to those mountains. So let me just go a little bit further here. I'm gonna add some brown. Just, you know, everything is like super dark, just to give you an idea. Okay, so it looks cute. I mean, it, there's really, it's not that bad, right? It's not that bad, but let's go. I'm going to start back on my how to do it the right way. And I'm going to gradually add a little bit of this red and I'm not going to add as much but I'm also going to make it I'm going to try to make it look like the same little mountain range okay let's go a little bit more warm so I'm going to add a little bit more warmth to this. And now you can see how it's so much more gradual. It just it's so much more pleasing to the eye. Like it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like it, it, um, it feels better when you look at it. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? It just feels better. Let me take some green because I'm going to add just a little bit more of the red. And I'm going to stay on the warm side. I'm going to stay on the warm side, a little bit more red and brown. That's a little bit too cool. I, gra I accidentally grabbed some blue in this whole process of mixing. Okay, so let's do this same mountain range that I did here. Gonna make it go up. You see how I'm adding those layers? And now I'm gonna show you something else. So this is this you kind of want to get the illusion here. Like what's happening is I'm taking a, a dry um, 
filbert brush, y'all. I did not even put it in the water. And I'm just kind of softening my edges. I should probably put it in the water because it's, it's not moving. It's really sticky. So I'm going to put it in the water and I'm just going to soften those edges because I'm so far back that I really want to give the illusion that, you know, it's kind of like a mixture of clouds and mountains in the atmosphere back there. Okay, so I'm just adding that little bit of softness right on the edge of my mountains. And then look at this, how, how stark it is, okay? So I hope you can see um, the major difference that I'm trying to show you here using depth in your paintings. So right now, I'm hoping you get the idea that this kind of looks like it's up in our face. And I'm, I'm going to put a tree. I'm going to put a tree right here. That's like really close to us. So let's make us a little tree. It's kind of wide, but let's make us a little tree. And I'm using green right now. Because, of course, our trees are green. So, I always, I always used to do this with my students in my math classes. You want to you wanna show people what an A paper looks like. Okay? You want to show them what an A paper looks like, but you also want to show them to, you know, to give them that idea if you're doing like a project or something, you also want to show them what a C paper looks like, you know, so they can kind of decide, okay, so how do I need to approach this so that I don't get a C and I get an A? So what do I need to do to make sure that I can get, you know, a pretty decent grade? And I'm just, I'm just using that analogy here just for these purposes. So look at this one. Okay, look at this one. Now let's go to um, this one right here. We're going to add, I'm going to add just a little bit more depth in here. I'm going to add one more layer and it's going to be a much warmer layer. I'm just going to make another little layer of mountains. So notice the closer I'm getting, the more I'm coming to like the real colors. Okay, what's what's really sharp and what's really like maybe there's a little bit of grass down here. And so you can really start seeing those true colors. Now this is I'm I'm not telling you all of this because I'm an expert at it. This is something that I struggle with as well and it's something that I am learning consistently is to try to work on my warms and my cools. Okay so now you can see that gradual depth take place. Let's go just a little bit further and now I'm almost the same color as I had here but look at the difference in I finally got there. You know what I'm saying? Like I finally got to that that color that I want. And now let's make a tree. Let's make the same tree in the same spot. And let's look at the difference. I'm just going to go straight up and down. Y'all already know how to make these trees. I'm just going to go straight up and down. I don't want, I don't know why I'm making a green trunk. <laughs> I'm making a green trunk on my tree. I'm not sure why. All right. And let's go back and put some little leaves. I'm going to use a little bit of a, a brighter green here. I'm not looking at comments. So...
Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be a cloudy, foggy day. I'm not sure who said that. But it's just the atmosphere does that to, like, if, if you um, if you look out, I know Miss Cindy is in the mountains right now in Colorado. If you look out, you will see in, in, in real life, you will see with the naked eye, all of that is just that that's the real perspective. Like, that's because of that atmosphere it causes the mountains to be really, really light, far away. And then as you come up closer, I'm just making this tree right here the best I can. It's still wet on wet, so it's not transferring over. I'm kind of picking up paint, so you're learning something else about what not to do right here. So instead of me putting the paint on the canvas because my paint underneath it is wet. I'm picking up paint, which is a no-no when you use um, your acrylics. So I would really, if I want this to be a really beautiful piece, I would really need to let that, uh, that bottom layer dry some because I'm definitely picking up the paint. You can see when I press, you can see how it's not it's not leaving the green. It's just showing the gray underneath. And that's what makes a lot of mud. So if you want to make your tree come all the way down, I'm just going to do this really fast because we've already studied trees. And I'm going to do something else. Okay, so look at the difference in these two already. Don't look at the tree. The tree is kind of, you know, but look at the difference in how much further, like these mountains look like they're way, way back there in the distance. And these kind of don't really have a lot of, of um, imagination in them. Is that a good word? I don't know what the right word is. Okay. But you can also see the difference in the trees. This tree actually pops and it's right there, it's right next to me. So I'm using um, very vibrant colors when I get really close up, okay? I'm using very vibrant colors. And I'm also going to, let me not use that one. I'm going to add, because I love making these little scenes like this, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, okay? Yellow is on the warm side. So the closer I get in to my, my subject, or the, the end of the painting, the more I want to add those warm colors. And so I'm just adding a little bit of some yellow mixed in the green, and I'm still having trouble. My paint is wet on wet, so it's not... It's not moving that great right now, but I'm just trying to give you the illusion of a little bit more depth in my tree. Okay, maybe I want to add just a little bit more. It's a little bit too yellow. Let me grab some green in there. I want to ground my tree. I don't want it look like it's, you know, I don't want it to look like it's floating in the air. But you can see the closer I get to the front of me, the more, I mean, I could do the same thing here. It's just not going to look as good. All right, the closer I get, so compare the two. Which one do you like better? I could even put some of this yellow up here in this tree. I'm just trying to give you a, a finished product to where they, they kind of look the same. Okay, so there's my comparison of the two. 
And um, I hope that this is, is teaching you something today. So you can see, um, yes, you can see the perspective so much better here because I went from a gradual transition from way back there. This is so much more pleasing to the eye. It gives you more of an imagination. It allows you to feel like you can go walk through here and go up and down these mountains. And, and, and um, if you want to add snow on them, you can add them. But look at the difference in the two. And again, this is what not to do. And this is what to do. Okay. So I'm impressed with how fast you did this. I'm only working on an 8x8. Eight eight. So <laughs> it's um, it's not really big. It's really quick to, you know. Yes, you do. That's exactly what you should like, Terry. That's what I'm trying to show you is this is not is the wrong way to do it because you're not getting that depth and it's all about that depth. You have to you have to have a gradual flow from, you know, your your landscape to um, eventually coming in all the way to your brighter colors. You know, you're really um, more you want the front area of your painting to have more um, more pop. You want it to have more of the of the brighter colors. You want your items, of course, to be larger. Okay, so something else we could do to this is if I want to show the depth of some trees, like way back here, then I'm going to take just a small brush and I'm going to show you. I'm going to add a little tree line way back here, but look at the colors that I'm going to use to add this tree line. I'm staying in those cooler colors all the way back there. See that? And I'm not adding a lot of... Um, sharpness to my to my uh, to my items if I come back here and I add some trees I'm using like a really green color all right look at these first of all look what that does okay now if that's not a great example of what not to do I don't know what is so look at the difference in the colors that we used okay in the values and if I use that really really dark green it just doesn't look right it just it looks like it's out of place it's like why can I see the such green mountains way back there like that's just not that's just not what we normally see in trees way back there okay so you can see the difference in um in those values there and how we use them. Miss Luann says she likes them both for different reasons. The dark mountains in the wrong way looks like the sun is hiding behind it, making a nice silhouette. Yes, but if you want it to be a silhouette, you would have to make sure that you add the right shading and the right perspective for um, for all of your pieces. But that is that's a very good point, yes. Yeah, do the green in a dark, in a dark gray or a blue. That's exactly right. But the the whole problem with this with this piece from the beginning is that this layer is too dark. So you shouldn't have to worry about trying to make this. This if this layer wouldn't be so dark, then you can get the right color a lot easier um, back here. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this lesson today. Um, we're gonna do. We only have two days left. We're gonna do some more depth. Um, like shading and things like that. We're going to do some more of that, and that's kind of where we're going to end this whole Acrylic 101. And, um, and yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Remember, we have our pop-up paint party starting on September 30th, which is Thursday. Tonight, I am going live in the pop-up paint party group to answer any questions that you have about this piece. And let me make sure you can see me. So I want you to even focus, look at this piece here. 
look at this piece and look at the depth back here. Look how much lighter everything is. Even though it's like a nighttime sky, look how much less vibrant the back is. And then as we got closer and closer to the front, the colors are like super, super vibrant. Okay? So, um, so yeah. So tonight, um, I think I set it for 7.30 tonight, 7.30 Central. We're going to go live. And in the pop-up paint party, we're going to gesso our board. And I'm going to take any Q&As that you have about the pop-up paint party tonight at 7.30 Central. And I also want to show you this before you go. We have some door prizes that we will be giving away in the pop-up paint party. And I want to show you what they are going to be. These are my paintings. These are my paintings. And they are on pillows. Okay? So these are some of the door prizes. They are printed on pillows. I have four different ones. Actually, I have eight pillows all together. I have two of each. So here's another one. It's fall paintings. Okay, you can see that one. Super cute. They're, um, they're normally sold in my Etsy shop. Let me show you this one. This one has a plaid background. Oh, I don't want to tear the paper. No, oh, I'm not going to do this one because I'm going to tear the paper. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's a it's an aqua blue pumpkin, and the back of it is plaid, is gray and white plaid. And then the last one I have is a large orange pumpkin. Let me see if you can see that one. It's a large orange pumpkin. And I have eight of these pillows. They are all my original artwork printed on pillows. So that's some of the door prizes that we have coming in the pop-up paint party. And um, if you did not get the information yet about it, it should be in the links above. So last night was the end of the early bird special. It was $15 to join the pop-up paint party. Now it's $20. To join the pop-up paint party, we start in two days. We start Thursday night, and it's five days. And um, and yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. I hope you all are too. And yes, thank you, thank you. So we will see you all next time on Jen's Den Art. And we'll be doing day 29 tomorrow. We're down to two more days. I hope y'all have been enjoying this. God bless. Y'all have a great day. Bye.